The Center for the Improvement of Human Functioning International presents this lunch and lecture. Today's topic, Understanding Food Labels. Your presenter, Donald R. Davis, Ph.D. Thank you, Jan, and thank you all for coming. My idea for today is to have fun using f food labels to figure out things about the food that often the companies would rather you didn't know. I got to thinking uh, today that I wish I'd titled my talk Fun with Food Labels. It might have been uh, sound more interesting than understanding food labels. Okay, let's, let's start in. Uh, there are three parts of food labels. The first part is the part that you see that the company wants you to see that has uh, its big print and often beautiful pictures, and uh, this is uh, their best foot forward. It can be misleading, though, as I will show you, or irrelevant. Uh, some of the things that are on the, this part of the label, or it may say all natural, which turns out not to mean very much at all. Uh, whole grain go goodness is fine, except you don't know how much. It might be just a little bit. Uh, low fat isn't necessarily good if uh, nuts, for example, and high fat fish are good for us. So those, those kinds of things are not very meaningful usually. Then there is the ingredient list in small print. Uh, where the amounts of the ingredients in the food are listed in descending orders of the amount by weight. Uh, in many ways, I think this is the most useful part of the food label, but there are pitfalls in reading food labels where some of the ingredients are moist and some of them are dry. The example I'll show you later is strawberry jam, where uh, the strawberries are 90% water and the sugar is completely dry, has no water in it, so you can be misled uh, looking at the list of ingredients. And then finally, there is the nutrition facts part of the label, which contains serving size, uh, calories, and, and the amount of some nutrients. And this too can be useful uh, for figuring out what's in this food, as I will show you. Now, uh, we'll start off with just three examples of uh, comparisons of the large print versus the small print. Large print says white cheddar and broccoli rigatoni, and maybe your kid says, look, Ma, this is a serving of broccoli. Uh, <laughs> but uh, don't get your hopes up. The small print says rigatoni with white cheddar and broccoli sauce, and there's only very small specks of broccoli in the sauce. So there's no requirement about how much of something is there in order for them to be able to say broccoli in the big print. Uh, this is a real interesting example. You can see at the grocery store, instant oatmeal, quote, strawberries and cream, or quote, peaches and cream. But if you look at the list of ingredients, you see that there's only dehydrated apples and red coloring or peach coloring, and no strawberry or no peach. Pretty misleading. Uh, large print says naturally fruit flavored be beverage. Small print contains no fruit juice. <laughs> so it's naturally fruit flavored. They didn't say natural fruit. They said naturally fruit flavored. This is an interesting example. Uh, this is a Pepsi brand. It's uh, no longer available, but it illustrates the way that marketing works in the, in the food industry. Uh, if you, let's see, where my point? Here we go. No? Well, don't have a pointer. Uh, it, it's Fruitworks brand, and it says um, here it says um, natch. Let's see where is it. Can't read it very clearly. Okay, it's on the slide. Strawberry melon, real fruit beverage is what it says right there. Okay. But if you look at the ingredients, there are no strawberries and no melons, although there are pictures of strawberries and melons here on the front of the bottle. And uh, it says 5% pear juice, and then red number 40 color and blue number one color uh, to make it look the way you see it. And so in other words, it's 95% sugar water, not a real fruit beverage. Okay, so 
I am most interested usually in reading the ingredients first because I'm interested in looking at uh, foods that are primarily whole foods and do not contain large amounts of non-whole foods. Uh, and this is where the list of ingredients in descending order by weight is helpful. It would be even better if it was listed in descending order of amounts by calories rather than by weight, and that would solve the problem of this comparison of moist foods versus dry foods problem. It's, in, uh, it's interesting to note that in the list of ingredients, when you come to salt, anything that's listed after salt is probably 1% or less of the food. So it's a very minor component, anything listed after salt, because uh, only one, maybe 2% of a food is ever salt. And then, as I mentioned, the watery ingredients can be misleading. Strawberry jam, as I'll show you, lists uh, fruit first and then sugar, but it's actually <coughs> sugar first. 95% of the calories in, in strawberry jam come from the sugar because the strawberries are 90% water. Now, the non-whole food ingredients that I'm looking to avoid are these. First of all, the category of added sugars, and they come under many different names. It may say sugar, which means uh, sucrose. It may say corn syrup or high fructose corn syrup. It might say fructose, glucose, dextrose, honey, which is uh, sweet but has very, very little nutrition. More recently, uh, some products have been using rice syrup or organic rice syrup. Uh, don't be misled by the rice because it's, uh, it's just like corn syrup. It's uh, pure sugar and very little, almost no rice in it. Then there's uh, agave syrup, which is, comes from a cactus from Mexico, or some of them are creatively calling it agave <coughs> nectar, but that too is just like corn syrup, uh, pure su sweetener, calories, and no nutrients. And then finally, uh, there are the sugar alcohols, sorbitol, xylitol, and mannitol. You'll see these in some foods that are labeled sugarless. They can call them that because uh, these sweeteners do not cause tooth decay, but they are not sugarless in the sense of calories. So from the point of view of looking for whole foods or trying to avoid non-whole foods, uh, these are in the same category as other added sugars. Then there are added fats, which includes all oils, butter, margarine, shortening, and lard. These add very concentrated calories but have almost no nutrients in them, so that's why I'm trying to avoid them. Not that fat per se is bad, but added fat that is pure calories and no nutrients is what I'm trying to avoid. And then finally, there are the refined grains, which are not as bad as the added sugars or added fats, but they have had the most nutritious parts removed, the bran and the germ. And what you see on the food labels uh, are listing for flour. It, it might say wheat flour. That's the same as flour or white flour. Uh, unbleached flour is also white flour. You need to know that. If it says wheat, corn, or cornmeal, or barley, it is also had, they have also had the bran and the germ removed, unless it says specifically otherwise by saying whole, whole barley, whole rice, or whatever. So these, these are the main things that I am looking to avoid. I'm not a purist. I don't insist that these things not be on the label at all, but I don't like them to be the first one, two, three ingredients in the food, uh, which they are for many foods. Actually, in the, in the U.S. food supply, these three categories uh, comprise more than half of the calories consumed in the United States, and so they are major ingredients in many foods. Now I'm going to show you a bunch of real foods, and we'll look at the labels and see what we can figure out. Um, Sarah Lee, to their credit, about a year ago announced a program to promote whole grains. And they, among other foods, they make this white bread to which they have added some whole grain, 
And that's a step in the right direction. But I want to show you that uh, it's not as much as you would like. Uh, it says uh, made with whole grains. And if you look, it doesn't show very well here, but it says made with whole grains here. Uh, the whole grain is in much larger print than the made with. Uh, and up here it says good source of whole grains. But the label tells a different story and something on their website tells a different story too. Uh, in the ingredients, uh, the first ingredient is enriched bleached flour, in other words, white flour. Uh, you have to get down to the third ingredient, whole grains, uh, which consists of whole wheat flour and brown rice flour, which is white rice flour with rice bran added. Notice many labels will have brackets and parentheses within the list. So enriched bleached flour, brackets, and this is the list of ingredients in that. And it ends here. And then the second ingredient is water. And the third ingredient is whole grains. And it itself has brackets and so on. It's kind of hard to read these things sometimes. Now, on their website, they have something that they call the um, whole grain finder. And it tells you how much whole grain is in their breads and in some other brands of breads. And for this particular one, it comes out to be about 5 grams of whole grain per 28 gram slice of bread, which is about 30% of the amount that's in their whole wheat bread, their 100% whole wheat bread. So I think it's, you know, even though this is better than ordinary white bread, it's a step in the right direction. It's only a 30% step, and uh, we don't want you to be misled about what you're getting. One of the signs of this is that you're only getting uh, two grams of dietary fiber in a serving, and you have to pay attention to servings here as I'll show you. The serving size says two slices, 57 grams. Uh, the serving is 150 calories. So out of 150 calories, you're getting two grams of fiber. Now compare that with uh, their whole 100% whole wheat bread, and this, this is easily misleading. Notice here that the serving size is one slice, 28 grams, 70 calories, less than half of the serving size before, and two grams of fiber. And if you didn't notice that the serving sizes were different, you would say, oh, it's the same amount of fiber, but it's actually less than half the amount of fiber. And according, and because these numbers have to be rounded, they can't say 1.7 or 2.2. They have to round these numbers. That's the FDA regulations. And so these numbers are pretty crude. There's a big plus or minus after them. And you, you would, just looking at this, you would say, oh, there's half as much fiber uh, in the white bread that I, just before that I showed you as there is in this one. But it, according to their own numbers on their website, it's about 0 0.3, 30% .3, as much. Well, give them credit for uh, adding some whole grain to their white bread and for having this uh, finder on their website. You can go to their website and look up how much whole grain is in different breads. Now, <clears throat> I want to digress just a moment here. These daily values or the percent daily values that, see on, that you see on these labels, these are approximate daily goals or limits for food labeling purposes. They're based on a 2,000 calorie diet. The percent daily value is a good guide to what is a good source or what is an excessive source of something. If it's 20% or more, for example, you would call it a good source of a nutrient. If it's less than 5% of the daily value, it's a poor source, although you need to understand if, if there's very few calories in a serving, like there is in lettuce, um, for example, uh, I wouldn't call lettuce a poor source of, of these nutrients. If you eat enough of it, it's actually a very good source. So it's, it's really the, ca the amount per calorie that is of interest to me. Now, continuing on with some examples, let's uh, see what we can figure out about this cereal. This is a pretty good cereal. Uh, there aren't too many around like this that are uh, mostly whole grain and low sugar. How you can figure that out? Uh, I'm sorry that you know the print is kind of small, even, and especially on your handout, it's very hard to read. Uh, the ingredients are, are whole grain oats, 
modified cornstarch, sugar, oat bran, and salt, and then a bunch of small ingredients. Uh, so far, so good, but we wonder how much sugar. Well, you can tell that from the label. Uh, the serving size is one cup, which is 28 grams, which is the same as one ounce. And the amount of sugar, where is it? Right here, one gram. So plus or minus, remember, these are all rounded. And I wouldn't put it past the food companies to play little games about you know, picking a, a food serving size that just is under the limit of where they'd have to round up versus rounding down. Um, I'm sure that that happens sometimes. Anyhow, uh, within the uncertainty, one gram plus or minus out of 28 grams, that's a very small amount of sugar. This is a, a good cereal in that sense. And uh, let's look at the fiber. Dietary fiber, three grams out of 28 grams and 100 calories. That's pretty good. It indicates a high fiber content, a high whole grain content. <coughs> Let's compare this cereal. Um, first of all, let me point out it says made with whole grain. They could have said excellent source of whole grain if they'd wanted to. Now this one, uh, Frosted Cheerios. Uh, it also says with whole grain up here. But, and if you look at the ingredients, that looks pretty good. Whole grain oats, second ingredient sugar, and then oat bran adds fiber, cornmeal, blah, blah, blah. You can't tell from the list of ingredients what you can find out from the nutrition facts label, and that is how much sugar is in this. There's a lot of sugar. There's 12 grams of sugar out of a 28 gram serving. Almost half sugar, big difference. You can't tell that to look at the ingredients, but the label will tell you. Uh, dietary fiber, two grams out of 28 grams and out of 110 calories. Uh, not as bad as white bread, but uh, not as good as the whole grain product, obviously. Then there is a Cheerio snack mix which uh, comes right out and claims good source of whole grain, but that's a stretch. Uh, if you look at it, it's a dietary fiber is only one gram out of 29 gram serving, which in this case is 120 calories. So this is uh, much less than 50% uh, whole grain. You can't tell that exactly, uh, but you have a warning here that the uh, first ingredient is enriched flour, so it's not whole grain. Okay. As far as sugars go, uh, it's pretty good. Uh, two grams out of 29, it's not a, not a highly sweetened thing. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of added fat either. Uh, calories from fat, 30 calories out of 120 calories. Uh, a lot better than French fries and potato chips, for example, which are about 50% calories coming from fat. Now, uh, Moving on to popcorn, microwave popcorn. There's uh, these four different uh, varieties, better butter, blast of butter, light blast of butter, and health, <laughs> healthy pop butter. And first of all, I'd like to point out that although each of them mentioned butter in the label, if you look at the ingredients, uh, there's no butter except in one of them. Which one is it? Uh, this one, okay? The others don't have any butter. The reason they can say butter is there's a natural butter flavor added to them. Now, <clears throat> the list of ingredients for all four of these is the same in terms of order. Popcorn, an added fat, salt, and then natural and artificial flavors. Popcorn, added fat, salt, natural flavors. Popcorn, added fat, salt. Popcorn, added fat, and salt. They're all the same. You can't tell any difference between them. but the the uh, nutrition facts label gives you a lot of new information. If you look at the calories, total calories, and look at the calories from fat, 90 calories out of 160, 56% of the calories are coming from the added fat in this one, 73% in this one, 46% in this one, 22% in this one. So there is quite a difference between these different products in terms of the amount of added fat calories that have been added 
to the product. So you can use this part of the label to help choose what you want. Uh, just corn without any added fat at all, only about 10% of the calories come from fat. So uh, these, these larger amounts, they're coming from the added fat. Even though the added fat is a second ingredient, most of the calories can be coming from, from the fat because there's more calories per gram of fat than there is calories per gram of, of uh, corn. Now, you might notice that we have two sets of numbers here, 90 out of 160 and 20 out of 30. Uh, the difference is only in rounding. Uh, this is for as packaged, two tablespoons unpopped. This is for one cup popped. And the bigger numbers are the ones that I used because they suffer less from being rounded. The smaller the numbers are, the bigger the uncertainty in them because of the rounding. Uh, this 90 over 160 is 56 percent. If you did 20 out of 30, that's 67 percent, quite a different number. This is also 67 percent versus 73. This would be 33 <coughs> percent instead of 46. This would be zero percent, obviously not right. So in this case, I would look always at these numbers, the bigger numbers, uh, because they don't suffer so much from rounding. So when you choose your popcorn, you can decide whether you're going to eat mostly popcorn or mostly added fat. <laughs> this is an interesting label, very attractive. Nature Valley has a wholesome ring to it. Yogurt has good vibes in our mind. Uh, chewy granola bars with naturally flavored yogurt coating. There's a picture of blueberries here. And it says, good source of whole grain. And it says, blueberry, blueberry yogurt, naturally flavored. All of that sounds good, but uh, the label doesn't sound so good. Um, ingredients, granola, parentheses, whole grain oats, that's, that's fine. It starts out, the first ingredient of the first ingredient is whole grain. But there's a whole lot of, of non-whole grains here. Uh, along the way. It's kind of hard to see, go down the list. But the bottom line is, look at the amount of fiber. Only one gram of fiber out of 35 grams of food and 140 calories. So uh, I would not call this a good source of whole grain based on that. Um, then let's look at the sugar. Is 13 grams out of 35 grams about a third sugar? Pretty high. Um, and as for yogurt goes, um, let's see, yogurt powder, brackets, heat treated after culturing, which means there's no live cultures left. You're not getting any of the advantage of, of real yogurt here as far as bacterial cultures go. Uh, and as for the blueberry, you have to get look down to here before you come to dried blueberries, way, way down the list, following salt, and this is the third salt that's listed in here. Uh, there's, an, there's one and there's another one somewhere. There is not much blueberry in there. Uh, there's more blueberry up here than there, <laughs> than there is in the bar. Uh, and you might notice that it's blueberries, citric acid, and then blue number two. So they add some blue color to add some appeal. Okay. Why would they have salt three times? Like Pardon me? Why would they have to list salt three times? Well, why would they list salt three times? Uh, because uh, there's granola, and then there is uh, the yogurt coating, and, and those each have ingredients within them. So it gets complicated with these ingredients within ingredients. Sausage, two ounce. Cooked portion, 56 grams. The interesting thing to me here is calories from fat, 140 out of a total of 180. You might not think that cooked sausage would have that much fat in it. It's not particularly high quality fat, so uh, this can be of some concern. Uh, I calculate 140 out of 180 uh, to be 78%. And remember, there's a plus or minus on that because of the rounding. 
they can't say 175 and they can't say 135. They have to round it here. Um, so 78% uh, of calories is our best guess of the amount of fat calories. Uh, here is Jimmy Dean, 50% less fat, sausage, 100 calories of fat out of 140 total calories, and I calculate that as 71%. Uh, that's not 50% less. Uh, I think if I don't, I can't read the fine print, but I think what it says here is 50% less than USDA standard sausage or something like that. It's not 50% less than their <coughs> other product. Okay, um, so that's still quite a bit. Um, in Austin, Texas, where I live, there's a store brand of light sausage that I buy. Uh, two ounces is 70 calories of fat out of 120 total which is 58%, so it's possible to make it low, uh, lower. Uh, no fat cooks out of this sausage. It's a really good sausage, tastes great, and uh, it's the same price as the higher fat stuff. Uh, let's look at uh, strawberry jam, and the next slide is going to be uh, a low sugar strawberry jam. You can't tell much from the labels uh, here the first ingredient is strawberries, then high fructose corn syrup, and then corn syrup, and then sugar, three different forms. It's possible that if they uh, combine these three together, that, that it would actually be the first ingredient. Uh, you can't tell. But you, what, what you ha it helps to know is that uh, the cup of sugar and a cup of fruit, which is the traditional re recipe for strawberry jam, 95% of the calories come from the sugar. So. One tablespoon serving size, 50 calories. If you go to the low fat, low, I'm sorry, low sugar version, uh, it's 25 calories in that same one tablespoon. So you're getting only half of the amount of empty calories, essentially empty calories in this food. Uh, the ingredients, strawberries, sugar, water, so on. They don't, have, they don't lift sugar three times. It's not, not quite as bad. So it's a step. It's a step forward, but it's still a long ways from fresh strawberries. This is an interesting comparison. If you look at the ingredients of Gatorade, which somehow uh, seems to have gotten a good image in a lot of people's eyes versus a soft drink, the first four ingredients are essentially the same. Water, added sugar, added sugar, citric acid, natural lemon and lime flavors. Same story here. Water, added sugar, citric acid, natural flavors. Uh, a different, one difference is that the Gatorade has some salt added and it has monopotassium phosphate added as a source of potassium. If you look at the nutrition facts for these, and you have to be careful. I had to look a long time before I found a label that was based on the same serving size. Serving size, eight fluid ounces. Serving size, eight fluid ounces, even though the can is 12 ounces. It was hard to find a label based on eight fluid ounces. The major difference is that, that Gatorade is diluted compared to the soft drink. There's only 50 calories per eight ounces compared to 96 calories per eight fluid ounces. So it's, it's about diluted by about half. And down here we have 110 milligrams of sodium because of the added salt, although this one ha still has almost half that amount, 47 milligrams of sodium. And this one has 30 milligrams of potassium because of that monopotassium phosphate that's added. But uh, look at the percent daily values. This, is, this 30 milligrams is only 1% of the daily value of potassium, so I don't understand what the big deal is. You can, get, you can get that amount, 30 milligrams of potassium, from half of a small orange or from five or six small peanuts. And if you did it that way, you would not only get that amount of potassium, but you would get all the other nutrients that are in oranges and in peanuts, for example, 
whereas this is just the pure added chemical and it doesn't contain all the other things that the natural food would have. So, uh, and as far as 110 milligrams of sodium, most people don't need that. If you do need it, you can get that from about three shakes of a salt shaker. Uh, so, I am not impressed with these things. Uh, my favorite thirst quencher when I come home from work, uh, bicycling, uh, is some watermelon. Very good source of a lot of things, including potassium and uh, <coughs> has some sugar, but it has a whole lot of nutrients in it, too, whereas these things are basically empty calories. Now, this is an interesting question. Is, is there an advantage to dry-roasted peanuts compared to oil-roasted peanuts? I used to assume so, and for quite a while I bought dry-roasted peanuts, even though I like oil-roasted ones better. They taste better to me. Well, if you look at the label here, serving size 28 grams, serving size 28 grams, they're the same. Calories 170, 170. Calories from fat 130, 130. So there's no difference. In other words, when you roast peanuts in oil, they do not absorb significant amounts of additional oil which is quite unlike the situation for potato chips or french fries or donuts or something when you fry or, or battered chicken or something like that. Uh, battered uh, shrimp, you may be eating uh, fried shrimp. You, know, it may, you may be getting 80% of calories from the fat that it was boiled in, that it was fried in. But that doesn't happen with peanuts. So I don't see an advantage here. And, uh, and I'm not, I have no objection to getting 130 calories from fat when it comes from a good quality whole food source. The objection to me about a lot of fat is if it's added fat. So I see no advantage to this. And in fact, I've read that there are some people who, who say that uh, there is a disadvantage to dry roasting and that is uh, it's done at somewhat higher temperature uh, and possibly makes the food more prone to be allergenic for people. And as I said, I prefer the taste of oil roasted, so I use oil roasted peanuts now instead of dry roasted. The amount of, of salt that is added, uh, this is 115 milligrams out of uh, 170 calories. That's not a horrendous amount. If you don't like it, you can buy low salt and no salt versions of roasted peanuts. Or you can do what I do sometimes. I'll just take a handful of them running under the faucet and rinse the salt off if you don't like it. So in this case, um, the label is helpful in showing that you can't, you can't tell by just looking at the label how much of this ingredient actually ends up in the food. But you can tell uh, by looking at the nutrition facts part of the label. This is a good example of a whole food energy bar. Most energy bars or snack bars that you see around have a lot of added sugar or, and or added oil, which puts them several steps on the track toward being like a candy bar or toward being like a pastry, a cake or cookie. A lot of, a lot of these bars are several steps along the way to being like a candy bar or, or a pastry. But a uh, lower bar is not. This is one of their flavors. There's, there's several other flavors that they put out. And they all uh, have uh, all whole food ingredients, dried banana, dates, and almonds. They're sweetening it with banana and with the dates. And the only source of fat is a whole food source, almonds. So the label looks pretty good. Uh, serving size, 51 grams, 220 calories. Fat calories, 100. This would be objectionable if it was added fat, but it's not. It's whole food source from purely from the almond. Uh, the amount of sugar, um, 17 grams out of 51. That would be undesirable if it were added refined sugar, but it's not. It's coming from the banana and from the dates. Uh, fiber, pretty good, five grams. 
out of 51, uh, that's, that's quite good. You're getting fiber from, from the banana, the dates, and the almonds. They're all supplying fiber. And as a result of this being uh, made entirely out of whole foods, uh, the amounts of these various nutrients here, these are the percentages of the daily values, vitamin E, 20%, thiamine, 6%, riboflavin, 15%, and so on. Uh, these are all pretty good, and you might compare this with uh, an energy bar or a snack bar that you might be using that's different than this. I think you'll find that these numbers are, are very high for, for this amount of calories because it's all coming from whole foods. So that said, this is, this is a good choice if you want the convenience of having a bar. But you're paying a lot for convenience. Um, in my, the store at home in Austin that I checked, these bars were selling for a dollar and a half. And that works out to uh, $13 a pound. And you can buy, if you buy, especially in bulk, you can buy all of these things for much less than $13 a pound. So if you don't need the convenience and you want to save a little money, uh, you could just buy bananas, dates, and almonds, put them in a bag and, and have a snack that you can have any time you wanted. And you would have the advantage of, of the banana being uh, a fresh fruit instead of being dried. There, there's quite a bit of loss when you dry fruit. Uh, and one, one hint of that is the vitamin C is 0% here. But it wouldn't, that, would that, that would not be true if you had the banana. Okay. So uh, this is a good bar, but uh, there are some alternatives too. You could just pack up these things. Now, uh, my last slide, we're going to have lots of time for questions, uh, is a supplement facts label. Just like nutrition facts labels, supplements have labels on the back that say supplement fact label. And this one uh, is a misleading one. The big print on the front of the bottle says magnesium gluconate 500 milligrams. And if you know that the RDA for magnesium is around 400 milligrams a day, and the daily value for magnesium is 400 milligrams a day, you might think, aha, this is a good tablet. It's got a lot of magnesium in it. But if you look at the back of the label, you find a different story. First clue is serving size is four tablets, and the amount of magnesium in four tablets is 110 milligrams, which works out to 27 and a half milligram per tablet. So how come they say magnesium gluconate 500 milligrams? Well, that's literally true. Magnesium gluconate 500 milligrams. The problem is that magnesium gluconate is about 90% gluconate and only about 10% magnesium. So it's misleading to say magnesium gluconate 500 milligrams because what we're used to looking at, at nutri on nutritional supplement labels is the amount of magnesium, not the amount of the carrier that it's in. So you need to be a little bit careful about that sometimes with uh, supplement labels. So uh, I hope these examples have been fun and interesting. We'll give you ideas about how you can be a smarter shopper when you go to the store and, and you're looking at these things and, and teach you how to discover things about a food that the companies often would rather you didn't know about the amount of fiber and the amount of sugar and so forth. If you want more information, um, I have a number of sources here listed. I hope these are readable on the handout. Um, I'd like to point out one of them here is in the middle of food additive uh, identifier. There's so many food additives, I don't know what half of them are. Uh, this is a website where you can go and look up what the purpose of uh, each one is. There are about 1,400 of them on that website. So <laughs> you can <laughs> find out what some of these things are for, okay? All right, so now we have time for questions, and they're going to bring around microphone. Okay. 
very good presentation. But um, my question is, how are food companies allowed to spin this information and you know make the attractive label and not have whole grains, you know, upon closer analysis? I th I think that all of these labels are legal. You know, for example, the um, the oatmeal that was peaches and cream or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, they have natural flavor. I don't know. Uh, I agree with you. Uh, I wish it wasn't legal, but apparently it is. So it's, it's buyer beware. That's why it's important to know that the, the first things that you see can be misleading, and, and you do need to look at the ingredients in order to protect yourself. What do you think of low-fat sausage made with turkey? Low-fat chocolate-flavored... <laughs> sausage made oh, with sausage. turkey, labeled low-fat. There's oh. Italian, there's sweet, there's hot, there's yeah. different kinds. Yeah, uh, low-fat sausage made with turkey. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I would just look at the labels. I would look at the amount of calories coming from fat. Yeah. And it has the advantage that turkey fat is somewhat higher quality than pork fat. Uh, it's, it's going to be higher in omega-3 than pork fat. Uh, so it has that advantage. The labels look pretty good. Okay. I wondered if I was getting pulled somehow. Yeah. No, I would look at the percentage of calories coming from fat fat calories out of total calories to tell. It could be it could be really high depending on how much skin they add in. Yeah. There was a question here that I deferred. Let's get to her. We got one. Right. Um does does rice have this bran in the germ just like wheat does? Uh, if it just says rice on the label it means white rice. But it does it have a, does the rice, do you know if the rice has a bran and a germ? Rice, when it grows, always has a bran and a germ. It does. It's okay. always brown rice when it grows. Mm -hmm. And then the, the bran and the germ is, is milled off, and that's what makes it white. Yeah. And if you see rice on the label, it means white unless it says whole or brown. Okay, we'll get to you. I noticed on some of the um, slides... For example, total fat of 11 grams, and it only identifies 3.5 of that being is saturated fat or something else. What are the rest of the grams? Okay, that the, fat, carbohydrates too? the total fat can be saturated, monounsaturated, or polyunsaturated. Right, so they don't show that. I always say it goes, like that one slide, I always show one. Yeah. Um, it could be that I cut off the part that shows the, no? Okay. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the details about that is. Apparently, they're, they're not required to list the mono and the poly. They are required to list the saturated if it's over a certain amount. Yeah. Dr. Don, I have a question. Um, yeah. I've heard and I've looked for uh, where trans fats are hidden, and they're difficult to find, and I know it's been cleaned up somewhat, but I feel they're still there. Is there any helpful advice in finding them? Yeah. For example, in like microwave That's popcorn. a great question. I meant to mention that. I forget which slide it was. Um, one of the products. Um, the microwave popcorn? Well, there was that one they had partially hydrogenated. The thing to look for, there, there are two places that you can look. One is where it lists the amount of trans fat. And if it says zero, that doesn't necessarily mean zero. It means less than 0.5. So if it's, if it's less than 0.5, they can round down to zero. If it's 0.51, they have to round it up to one gram. So if it says zero, you're not out of the woods completely. It's, it's not a big source, but the way to find out whether there's any at all is to look for uh, partially hydrogenated vegetable oil in the list of ingredients. And as I, I don't remember that there is any of that in this one, but there was another one of my slides. I forget which one. Maybe it was, yeah. Okay. Um, trans fat, zero grams, but 
partially hydrogenated soybean oil, so you know it's not zero. All you know is it's less than half a gram. So if you really want to be careful and completely avoid it, you need to avoid an ingredient that says partially hydrogenated something on it. Yeah, if it's fully hydrogenated, it's okay. There's no trans fat left, but partially hydrogenated, that's the key. Okay, thank you. We have time for another oh, question. There's one up there, up the front row. Is there one here? Where's the question? Oh, I did. After that one. This isn't exactly a question, but I've noticed on labels <coughs> the term naturally hydrogenate, hydrogenated and thereupon referring to palm oil and um, coconut oil, which of course are natural, but yeah. address that. I haven't seen that. Naturally hydrogenated, they yeah. say. Okay. Big deal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and this is palm oil and uh, maybe coconut oil. Yeah. Uh, coconut oil and palm oil are uh, highly saturated. And, but it's, it's not because of man-made. It's, it's naturally highly saturated. It's not because of hydrogenation. Hydrogenation adds hydrogen and, and tends to saturate things. So um, as far as there being a trans fat issue, there isn't one there, okay? Um, and personally, I do not worry about the saturated fat in coconut oil and in palm oil because these fats are short chain fats. They're relatively uh, liquid. <coughs> Compared to beef fat, for example, which is pretty solid, you don't get a greasy spoon with uh, palm oil, for example, where you do with beef fat. Uh, that's just kind of uh, my opinion. Some people would disagree with it. They think that all saturated fat is equally bad. Uh, if true, then, then you should avoid these palm oil and uh, coconut oil type things. But the fact is that people who live on these islands and eat a lot of coconut and eat a lot of palm oil fat, as long as they eat natural whole foods, native whole foods, they don't have heart disease very much. Uh, it's when they start bringing in the white flour and the sugar and, and that kind of stuff, that's when they get into trouble. So I don't worry about those naturally saturated things. Well, I actually have several questions, but what are some alternatives for like I mean, I noticed you said the rice syrup and xylitol, and which in the natural field they're saying to use. So what are some alternatives for sugar then? And also for butter. And then I had a question on the, um, the Gatorade. I have a son who's working outside all day long, and he was told he's having, getting sick, so they told him to do Gatorade to replace electrolytes. But there's actually a G2, which is supposed to be healthier. So is there an alternative to replace electrolytes? Watermelon, orange juice, water, <laughs> salt shaker. Okay, yeah. Uh, it, it's, true, it's true that for someone who's exercising intensely, they may need some extra salt, but they will tend to have an appetite for salt and, and salt their food more. That'll tend to happen. As far as potassium goes, that's, that's great, but I personally would rather get it from orange juice or watermelon or any, any other whole food source. So there's lots of alternatives there. As far as uh, natural alternatives for sweeteners, um, dates. You can also buy uh, date sugar, which is uh, just ground up dates. I've used that in baking. Um, part of the problem for most people in the United States is that their taste buds have been so saturated with large amounts of added sugar that they don't respond very well to small amounts, the natural smaller amounts of sugar that are in fruit. So that uh, it's difficult sometimes, people who are used to a lot of soft drinks, candies and cakes and things like that, bananas, oranges, apples don't taste very sweet to them. It takes a couple of weeks, something like that, get off of sugar before they, st they start to taste sweet. So it's hard to compete with uh, these concentrated, added, refined sweeteners. There isn't, there isn't a good solution except to use our brains and decide whether we really want to get our sugar that way or not. 
from from these refined sources. Dates dates are the best uh, example. Uh, you can, uh, you know, I make a, a smoothie at home with uh, banana as a sweetener, and then you can add blueberries and strawberries or cantaloupe, orange, whatever you want to it. And the riper the banana is, the sweeter the smoothie will be. And to me, to me, that's very sweet. Uh, a great alternative to a milkshake, for example, and much better nutritionally, too. So, uh, nature, in my view, nature intended us to like sweet. Where babies are born liking sweet. Uh, but in nature, that attraction to sweet leads us to eat good foods. And we short circuit that when we satisfy the sweet desire that we have in the form of refined sugar. And it's a really tough problem. I, I don't know a good answer to it. We have to use our heads and decide how do we want to get our sweet. I, I choose to try to get it nearly all from whole foods, fruits, sweet vegetables, uh, berries, melons, and things like that. Um, you said earlier that the fully hydrogenated fat was okay. Is fully hydrogenated fat a man-made type of saturated fat, or is that something that's natural? Um, in Europe, for many years, they made a margarine that did not have trans fat in it, and the way they did it was they took vegetable oil, they started with vegetable oil, which is what we do with margarine here too. And then they they fully hydrogenated part of it. And there's when you fully hydrogenate it, there's no double bonds left and there's no trans fat left. It's all gone. And then they mixed that solid fat with some oil that had not been hydrogenated at all. So again, no trans fat, but the mixture of those two was kind of like margarine, our margarine. So that was one way of making a, a, a non-trans fat margarine using human-made, fully hydrogenated oil. Yeah, so uh, there aren't any completely hydrogenated oils in nature, but coconut oil and palm oil come pretty close. Do, do you, are you careful with the saturated fats then from animal products? Yeah, uh, I sh the way we feed our animals uh, tends to increase the amount of fat two or three times above natural levels, and it shifts them toward saturated and away from omega-6 that they would have in nature. So I limit the amount of fat from farm-raised animals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In my attempt to sweeten things more naturally, I find I'm using concentrated or they're adding pear juice and at times I use pineapple juice or even crushed pineapple. Am I going to run into any problems there? Pineapple juice and pear juice are not completely whole foods but because when you squeeze the juice out of something you lose fiber, you lose, you lose protein, you lose some nutrients. It's kind of halfway in between. So it's a step forward. If you can sweeten something with whole fruit, that would be better. Uh, applesauce would be closer to that, although it doesn't have the skin, unfortunately, and a lot of the phytochemical benefits of apples are in the skin. Um, what else can you use? You can use banana, a ripe banana would be a whole food sweetener, or dates would be a little bit better. But the juice is a step ahead, certainly. Yeah. Over here at Sam's Club, they have papayas that they call Caribbean papayas that are multiple times the size of Hawaiian pineapples, or papayas. And there's no food labeling on them as far as nutritional values. How does it compare? Are you familiar with the Caribbean uh, red papaya? <laughs> and, they're, and they're three bucks. Yeah. I, I'm sorry, I do not know. Um, I would guess that they're probably pretty similar. Uh, the first place that I would try to get an answer to that question would be to, to go to the USDA Nutrient Fata Database for standard reference, it's called. You could Google USDA standard reference, and they have about 8,000 foods, and you can put in papaya and see whether they distinguish between those two and compare them. Uh, I wouldn't 
be count on them distinguishing between the two. They, they probably just have one papaya. So I don't know uh, how you would get an answer to that question if it's not there, but I would guess it wouldn't be greatly different. All whole foods are pretty good. Doesn't matter. Um, regarding not a whole food sweetener, but uh, what do you know about stevia? Stevia is a, a plant. The leaves uh, have something in it that tastes very sweet. Um, it's been used for centuries in South America as a sweetener, and last I knew it was the only sweetener allowed in Japan because it's a natural product. It's the only artificial sweetener they allow there. Uh, it has not been approved yet as an artificial sweetener here in the U.S., uh, probably because of opposition from the companies that make artificial sweeteners. But you can buy it as a, quote, nutritional supplement. Uh, so you can use that as an artificial sweetener. And yeah, it has a long history of use. It's probably safe, but you can probably overdo it too. If you get too much, it tastes bitter. Um, I don't know. How do you spell it? Stevia, S-T-E-V-I-A. Stevia, you can buy it as a powder. You can buy it as a liquid drops that you add. It's very, very concentrated, sweet taste. We do carry stevia upstairs in the gift of health, and it does taste very good. Okay, we have time for one more question. I've noticed on the back of uh, some of the packaging that... Um, the beginning ingredients, instead of just saying sugar or, or dextrose, they'll list the different forms, fructose, etc., and in descending order. So is that just their way of getting around the labeling? It, it quite possibly is. Uh, nobody knows for sure, but we certainly suspect that that they can they can push the sugar ingredients down the list by by di dividing them up into two or three different sub-ingredients. Um, an example of that was um, a few years ago, Apple Jack cereal. The first ingredient they showed was a grain ingredient, which was a combined of three different grains, and then came sugar. But if you look at the label, uh, it was 49% sugar, very close to half sugar. You'd never guess that if you didn't look at the label very carefully and where they put their commas and their semicolons uh, listing those ingredients. So, you know, they never t they're never going to admit it, but I'm sure that that kind of game playing goes on. Yeah. Subdivide the sugars into different kinds. You can do honey, you can do sucrose, you can do uh, fructose, high cr fructose corn syrup, <laughs> each one different ingredient. The preceding program was presented by the Center for the Improvement of Human Functioning International in the Bright Spot for Health Lunch Lecture Series. To inquire about additional health-related information available on DVD, audio CD, VHS, or audio cassette, simply call 316-682-3100 or drop by 3100 North Hillside in Wichita, Kansas. To discover more about the Center and what we have to offer, be sure and visit us on the web at www.brightspot.org.